Roll, rock and roll. Amen. Well, we're recording now, so I guess we're ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Papa, we come to you this morning. We just praise you for who you are. We, uh, we give you all the authority and all the the insight and all the revelation through for this meeting. And we just uh, pray that your, your name would be glorified and uh, lifted up through everything that's said and done here this morning. And Lord, we just, uh, we just thank you for who we are in you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Well, I've been working through this um, healing thing. And uh, I just, I don't know, I think it's a really good topic. And it's something that that's pretty misunderstood, tr truthfully, in my opinion. And uh, one, of the, one of the things we misunderstand so much about, not just healing, but our, our salvation, our, our redemptive package, what I'd rather call it, is that it, it's way more inclusive than just providing us an escape from whatever torturous thing that these angry God things people think we're supposed to be into. And more so than that, than that, even it's more than just an escape from sin. It, it is because the sin is, he took the sin away from the world. It's no longer here. It's no longer an issue. Uh, it's uh, now we, you know, in the evil of the world, he he's actually taking care of all that, and it's just uh, so. And the word that the word that is translated into well starts out. They use it as the being saved, saved, and uh, the word is the Greek word is sozo. And but sozo means so much more than just relinquishing us from sinful patterns or whatever, you know? And uh, so, and Jesus came to the world basically, well, let me back up. Well, this um, package, redemptive package was put together before the world was even put together. They got together and they, they knew, foreknew, which they, they know everything. God knows everything. He knew how people were going to react and what they were going to do and and the everything with in in the world and so they they put together this redemptive package, which is a whole complete package. Which is we'll get into that. It's real fantastic. And they uh, and then when Jesus came to Earth, he demonstrated how to live out that that redemptive package that was his purpose in coming here his death burial and resurrection sealed that package at least that's that's the way i get it and they sealed that package for all mankind and it, it was available before but but it was sealed in forever in that act of, of obedience of him coming to earth and being crucified, shedding his blood. And it was the, it was the blood of Christ that sealed that package. And so when we look at Sozo, I have some verses and stuff. I don't know whether how many of you got this thing, but Bill Carpenter put something on, uh, put an email out this morning and it was just, I mean, it was, it was really cool. And uh, if we have time, remind me, I'll read it at the end. Okay, so the first scripture I want to read is from Galatians chapter one, chapter one, verse one through five, and I'm reading this from the Passion. It says, from Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, my apostleship was not granted to me by men, for I was appointed by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. All the brothers and sisters join with me as I write this letter to the churches throughout the region of central Turkey. May God's undeserved kindness and total well-being that flow from our Father and from the Lord Jesus be yours. He's the anointed one who offered himself as the sacrifice for sin. Now, that sacrifice for sin is 
the word sozo. He has rescued us from this evil world system and set us free just as our Father God desired. May all the glory be to God alone throughout time and eternity. So that that's kind of how this start they started out. He's but all this all this stuff there's um the word sozo was used over a hundred times in the New Testament to mean to, and translated as saved over a hundred times. And that's I'm sure that's probably in those numbers probably come from the uh King James version, I'm I'm assuming. I'm I'm pretty sure. And so and some of the examples of that are Matthew 121 says, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save, which is sozo, his people from their sins. First Corinthians 121 says, After that, in the wisdom of God, the world of wisdom knew not God, that pleased God by the foolish foolishness of preaching to save, sozo, them that believe. And the Hebrews 7:25 says, Where, wherefore he is able also to save, sozo, them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I'm not, I don't totally, totally buy that. He's always making intercession for us because he, we, we can go right straight to God, but there's more to that, more to that verse than what, what I read there. That's just a snippet to show you what Sozo is saying. And then <clears throat> and it goes on, it goes on to, to also mean forgiven, healed, delivered. So, <clears throat> and then it goes to, and that's, it's another 53 times that it's instead of save, it's translated as saved, which encompasses that whole process of forgive and heal, deliver. And we can go to the story of Jairus, Jairus and his daughter, and how he went to Christ and said, you know, if you come, if you come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed that and that healed is from the word sozo and she shall live and then later on in that story he talks about her being made whole that word is also sozo so and it intrigues me how they can take this one word and make it mean so many different things it's I, it's a little bit uh Probably a little bit to do with context, I'm sure, but uh, and ironically, when when Jesus was speaking, he didn't speak Greek anyway. He spoke Aramaic, which does not translate exactly the same. It's close, but it's not the same. So, and of course, the word "heal" there is referring to physical healing, and then uh, <clears throat> and so when he said that she would be, you know, she's whole that not only refers to referred to physical healing but it also uh referred to resurrection from the dead and so and the same word is used for both of those and also for the forgiveness of sins or, or however you want to want to look at that and then and it also it also means later on he talks about the demoniac they call him scripture calls it and that he cast out the demons well that word where he cast out the demons and he, the, the demoniac was healed that word is also so so i i'm saying all this to say it means a whole bunch of things and so and it means it talks about christ's power to save resurrect whatever that's all that's all included in that word and uh, there's in uh, James chapter five, he talks about the prayer of faith shall, shall save sozo the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Now. Well, they've already been forgiven. So that's a mistranslation a little bit too. And then, uh, and then when the where where the uh, the Pharisees, he was in a, in the temple. And the man with the withered hand, 
came forth, you know, and he said, uh, and they were trying to rebuke him to not, or exhort him to, to him not to heal that man on the Sabbath. And he said, Jesus said this, he said, is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil? <clears throat> to save life or destroy it. That, there's Sozo. And so then he went on and told the man, stretch forth your hand. And his hand was made whole. Once again, Sozo. So it also means, it means being made whole. And it also means being abundantly supplied. And so, let me see, let me go back because that's a bigger deal. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 7 through 9, and I'm going to read this from the Passion. I'm also going to pick pieces. I mean, I'm going to read, some, read it out of the Amplified also. Probably. And then out of the Passion, it says, you do well and excel in every respect now here he's talking to the court the people at corinth he says you do well and excel in every respect in unstoppable faith in powerful preaching in revelation knowledge and in your passionate devotion and in sharing the love we have shown to you so make sure that you also excel in grace-filled generosity I'm not saying this as though I were issuing an order but to stir you to a greater love by mentioning the enthusiasm of the Macedonians as a challenge to you, for you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake, so that by his poverty we would become rich beyond measure. So he was infinitely rich. He was, I mean, he was, you know, in heaven where they you know, were. And with well, he was with God and everything is his, and he became a man. And I, I don't believe that that Jesus was in poverty when he was here. I think he lived with no home. But they had he had a they had a treasurer, and he was always instructing them to give money to the poor. So people were were supporting their ministry, and he, I mean he didn't go around in rags. You know he they 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 dressed well for the time. And they, they were, they were, they were fine. They were having, well, because he was with them, they had an abundant life. And so in, from the Amplified, it says, but just as you excel in everything and lead the way in faith and speech and knowledge and general, genuine concern, and in your love for us, see that you, see that you excel in this gracious work of giving also. I'm not saying this is a command to dictate to you to prove but pointing out the enthusiasm of others and the sincerity of your love as well. For you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus, his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that his poverty you might become rich or abundantly blessed. Now, I'm not, I'm not reading this to try and coerce anybody to do anything. I What I'm saying is we have a lot of we have a lot of things to give we can give words we can give support we can give praise uh, all kinds of stuff you know i'm not i'm not just talking about finances here that's just not how it works and so because god has god provides each and every one of us with a different direction and a different way to give <clears throat> what we have what we have I mean, we have uh, we have resources that we don't even realize are resources. Um, our joy, our love, and all those all those things, all those fruits fruit of the spirit, are resources that He's given us that we can lay out for others to either glean from or recognize, or be encouraged by, and all that stuff. And so it just gives us a uh, kind of a different platform, you know, to, uh, to look at to look at this whole, this whole thing. So I 
the, I guess my, I don't, I don't like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be a church basher and I don't, I'm not, but a lot of the, a lot of the modern churches have determined salvation only to be for the forgiveness of sin or the, or for fire escape, you know, <laughs> that, that's the way they, that's the way they bring it across. But that's kind of a misrepresentation of what the Lord did. And, you know, taking care of sin was definitely the centerpiece of that, of that sozo. But at the same time, he died to purchase redemption. And that redemption package includes being free of free from sickness, disease, depression, and poverty. And like, like I said, you can look at you can look at um, success or being rich in a lot of different ways. It's not always monetary. And so uh, so as we go through life, we can look for opportunity to be a blessing to others. And we can look for opportunity in for ways to um, encourage others. Um, we can, you know, there's just there's lots of avenues that we can go through to to make that to live that sozo life through us. So, so what do you think? What are you thinking? What's God told you this week? And what is, or what do you think about what I just said? How does that, how does that work? How does that work for you? Kitsy. I totally agree. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anders. You're muted. There you go. Yeah. Um, what came to my mind is at first that uh, this so so sounds like it's almost the same as shalom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it mean, means uh, uh, the completeness yeah. in some way. But also, um, what came to my, my mind was the, when, when, um, when Mac is talking with uh, Papa in, in the, the shack. Um, Papa says to him that uh, birds were made to fly. It's a, it's a, it's something that is uh, normal and natural for a bird, mm -hmm. and so it's uh, natural, normal for a person to be loved. Amen. And to know that he or she is loved by God, and I yeah. think that's that's very important. Um, um, especially if perhaps when when we are we are when we are sick or when we are depressed when we are in in need mm -hmm. we we need to remember that we are in all this we are loved yeah it doesn't matter what we do or what we have done uh, sometimes uh, memories come come back for me from, from a long time ago where I have done things that were really awful. And uh, now, when I'm soon, soon 74, <laughs> I start to see that I don't have to, I don't have to, to linger on that feelings right. around these, uh, these uh, um, uh, things that have happened, uh, that I have done or uh, that has been done to me. So, Amen. Amen. well, that's what I have. I have this. I have this saying that I say to my wife way too often, evidently, uh, is that you know they make they made the rearview mirror small and the windshield big, <laughs> so you can look forward and not back. I mean, it's important to be able to look back for instruction or you know whatever, but <clears throat> it's more important to look forward. And so that makes it a bigger field. So, yeah. I must say that to her too often because she gets upset when I say it sometimes. <laughs> Stan, what do you got? Okay, I believe that um, we have a greater appreciation for Sozo 
when we have a more accurate uh, understanding of, of our father. Yeah. We don't see him as angry and vindictive. Right. When we see him as, as Christ is, that's when we really can appreciate, uh, I think, and experience Sozo. Yeah. You know, one of the things that always confused me somewhat <laughs> before was that the, the church I went to would always talk about how Christ was loving and passionate, compassionate and all that stuff, you know. But yet God was angry and could throw us in a lake of fire. And then they talk about the Trinity, the three being one. Well, how can one have those different personalities? That just doesn't make sense to me. That's probably one of the things that led, led me away from that. What? So, Kitsy, go ahead. I was listening to Steve McVeigh this morning, and he was talking about a woman whose grandson, who was seven years old, asked her um, what, he, what his purpose in life was. And the first thing, you know, Steve was saying, that's an amazing question coming from a seven, a seven year old. And the grandmother answered, your purpose is to love. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's everything just all wrapped up into one yeah. word. And uh, yeah. I thought that was great. And, um, and another thing, if you um, haven't watched The Chosen, I strongly <laughs> encourage you all to watch that. It's, it's amazing. And then, of course, now coming up to Easter, be interesting to see what the episodes will be like, but just simply amazing because you see the love of Christ in this show and um, in this series. So I just want to plug that a little bit. Yeah, I've heard people criticize that show, and I, I'm pretty quick to say, you know what? It's not factual. It's fiction based on truth. So you can't criticize it, you know, because it's not, you got to give them, you know, you got to give them poetic license, I guess, you know, because it's not, not trying to depict it perfectly. They're just trying to convey the idea. So anybody else? <coughs> Jeff. Oh, just a couple things. Um, this might help you with your uh, saying about life. You mentioned earlier about looking forward. I, I Soren Kierkegaard, a uh, short-lived uh, philosopher from the past, said once, "Life must be lived forward, but can only be understood backwards or, or looking backward." And uh, you know. That maybe that's why the, uh, you know, the analogy you gave about the big windshield and the small rearview mirror makes sense. You know, we still, we still, we have the hindsight, obviously, looking backwards, and we should for that purpose of understanding. <clears throat> uh, but on to today's subject about Sozo, I, uh, something that just came to mind was that, you know, this working out our own salvation, not meaning it's our job to do, but to, to but to co-create and observe, you know, be be participants in, is uh, is it's much bigger than what concerns us and our our lives. Though our lives, like a match to a tender and and a, and combustible material is is the you know it's important for that to happen for that fire to happen that creative fire if you will to happen in our life first takes the match it takes it takes our participation and <clears throat> and that uh, this uh, you mentioned the opportunity to uh, I don't know if you said it this way or if I heard it this way and wrote it down but the opportunity to create blessing in the lives of others or to bring that sozo life that we're experiencing to others is a uh, it's it's a it's a kind of expansion of the kingdom in one sense because the kingdom creates and brings what it you know what was not into into existence or into manifestation and it's a it's it's a it's a type of renewal 
when we create. Uh, you know, you think of uh, inner city gentrification, you know, you go in and, you know, planners and developers go in and see what is basically a zone of uh, dec decline, decay, and no interest, and they create, they create something, and from that grows this gentrification process. Um, and that, you know, we, we create the future we want, or the or another word uh, another word for create is envision, and and we know. Uh, I remember uh, to invoke someone that passed recently, Ray Petit. One of his main go-to scriptures was, you know, people perish for lack of a vision. It's, I think it's from Hosea, and or Habakkuk maybe. Uh, and, you know, in the negative way of looking at is that, yeah, yeah, if you're blind, you know, to the possibilities or the, you know, to the truths we're understanding about the creative power within us, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to apprehend what is possible in, in the act of creating something and the, and the creator within us that is, that is the genesis of every new thing that happens in our life. So uh, that's about what I have. That's something. Yeah, that's the, that's all, you know, I really, I really do believe that encouragement is as big a, a big a thing for us as anything else. I mean, we, uh, if we can encourage others. And if we, if we, if we do it in God's love, then which, you know, we should, we, I mean, we, we do, we live that because it's God's love is within us. But if we do it with the, the projection of God's love, then it's totally effective in them seeing where it's from, where it actually comes from it's not necessarily from us even it's from christ and, and if and as we as we do that then they they can see that and it just makes it it's almost more valuable to somebody than than handing them cash you know what i mean or something like that well i would i would i would say Let's keep in mind, uh, I think it's from, it's from the Apostle Paul talking about how we're perceived by others, since you mentioned that. And that is, you know, to one, we're the, we're the scent of death, but to another, we're, we're the scent and fragrance of life itself. And, and we must understand it. We, we carry that because of the presence. It isn't, it, you know, a rose doesn't smell like a rose, except that it's a rose. And, and that is what it is by creation. And we, by new creation, we have the scent of the creator within us. And it's life. It is life. And we, we have an effect on people. We know, we know this by faith, yes. But we also see it. We also, looking back, we see it in the lives of others. And we can trust that we can trust this aspect of our new creation that we're having an impact. We are having an impact, folks. And it's because we're a new creation. We, we smell like the life that has been given to us and, and, and is shed, shed abroad through our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's, that is a happening thing, whether we, whether we consciously do or don't do something. That's, that's what's going on. And, and yes, in some, it's the, it looks like death. It's, it's death to the life that they're holding on to desperately in, in uh, uh, from the raft that they need saving from. So. Yeah, you know, we, uh, and we don't, I mean, I, I, I agree with what you say about being life and death, but we're more, we're more about life than we are about death. And well, that's we, it. That's incidental. I think the death aspect yeah. that is just, it's the contrast of this new creation versus what we were. I think that's how I hear it from that, that scripture. So, so we weren't created right in the first place. I think I, 
No, that's an assumption. And that's not really what I'm, I'm saying or feeling. I, I think when I say new creation, I mean uh, awaken to. Awaken we to all, what, uh, it's new to us. I can yeah, tell uh, everybody when I buy something, it's new to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a recognition of who we really are yeah, in the first yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, exactly and, right. And, and, and we got to make that distinction because once we, once we see that, then we realize that person that we're interacting with isn't something that don't, that doesn't have something that we do have. Right. It's just, they, they may not have realized that they have what we have big difference, big difference in, in what we've been taught in evangelism of we're right and they're wrong. Right. That's not the case. And, and, and it completely changes how you interact with people. It, it, we are to encourage, I mean, Gerald's right on the money talking about us encouraging people. The fundamental task of, of, of evangelism I've come to realize is to encourage people to know who they are in the first place and, 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 yeah. and not, and lay down the baggage that people have handed them by convincing them that they're somebody else. And by the way, the biggest, biggest source of that come from the pulpit. And, and, and so here we are, here we are representing the almighty God and what it sounds like to people around us is that we're countering what they think he said, because they've heard it said from a pulpit for decades. And and it's, it's an interesting situation, but we got to remember we aren't special except that we're made the image of God, which means everybody's special. And he's, he's given us, He's, he's, he's given us everybody, but they don't realize it. The mind of Christ. And in Timothy, it talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. And I believe that's rightly, rightly dividing means we're, we're to take the, the, the grace that he has shown us and divide that away from the law. So basically, it's almost like you divide it down the middle of the New Testament, and what what was before the the cross is divided in one section, and what's after the cross is divided in another section. It's not totally; that's just a real simplistic thing. Uh, but you know, and all that's all the stuff that was even even the way back in the Old Testament, all that stuff is beneficial for us to learn from. It's not necessarily for us to live by, but it's for us to learn from. If that makes does that make sense, to everybody? Because it's not it's not a uh, it's not a wherewithal. There's not a magic a magic formula. There's not a um, a certain guideline. It's because God deals with every one of us in our own bent. He talks, I mean, it talks about that when we talk about training up children and the way that should be, it says train up child in the way they should go. And what that really should be translated as train up a child in the way that they're bent. And what that means is it's the way that they think and the, you know, the, the, the way that they lean towards. Uh, so you don't train up a child to be just like you because I have, you know, I've raised eight children and there's not one of them that's like me. Uh, there are some that have some similarities, but they're, none of them are just like I am. And I don't want them to be. I want them to be total individuals. And they are. They're fantastic. And, uh, and they've, all, they've all become very strong uh, pillars in their community and their church, which is a huge thing for me. So, and we've got, you know, that's just how, that's just how I think we're supposed to be. And that's how God trains us up. He doesn't train us up to be a cookie cutter type person. He trains us up in the way we're bent. So, however, and that a lot of things affect that the way we were raised affects that and the way that we uh, uh, are, you know, of course, our culture. And where we live, and what we, you know, kind of what we do, 
Um, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of factors in that, but God is right there with us doing those very things with us because he's, he lives, he's in us and we're in him. So how could he not be right there with us, you know? And so all that stuff is all part of this, part of this sozo package, you know, you gotta love it. It's just that we're, uh, we're totally, he's totally into us and we're, we, we can be totally into him and, and just spread his love everywhere we go. Cause, cause the Bible tells me so, so. <laughs> I mean, you, you could exactly. almost, you know, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, in reality, and I, everybody that knows me knows I absolutely love the Bible. I love the King James Bible. I mean, mm-hmm. I, 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 I love them all. Um, but in reality, and, and I want to say this delicately because I don't, I don't want to be misunderstood, but in a way, JL, it's fiction yep. based on the truth. It, that's just, that's, the, yep. the, the truth is the truth is in there. <clears throat> if you'll look for it and the spirit is constantly trying to tell you the truth. If you'll let you hear it, uh, it, it, and, and I, I know that might offend people and I guess that could bother me or not bother me one way or the other, but, but it, it, it's a story and inside that it's a, it, I agree that it's the greatest story ever told. I, I remember there was a movie when I was a kid about that. It is the greatest story. And like every great story, there'll be, there'll be immense amounts of, of life truth in it. And it's, it's, it is the greatest story ever told but it is a story and it's going to have, I mean, you, you almost said, and, and don't hear me as being critical. Uh, it kind of makes this point. You, what I almost heard out of you talking about Sozo is it's a word you can make, say anything you want it to say. And, and, and from a standpoint of, of allowing that umbrella word to say, okay, take this word and look for the truth behind it. That's exactly what it is. But you can say that about every word in the Bible, because if you really look, every story in there, every story in there gets us back to who we are. Well, you know, it's all every, every bit. And and I've heard people say, I used to get offended with this when people say, you know, the Bible is a history book. Well, that's absolutely what it is. And if you start at the beginning, it's, his story history means his story right his story and then it's the next guy it's his story and the next guy it's his story and clear clear up to when pretty soon it becomes our story you know and and there'll be a time i mean we have we're we're in the middle of the evidence of that we have a we're following a a mantra from paul gray's story you know and it's uh and it's a huge, it's, it's a huge influence to us and to many, many others. I, I can tell you that much for, for sure. We uh, are the I, now. I, yeah. I get, I get, I get, um, every, almost every well, two or three times a week, I'll get somebody wanting to join Paul Gray's grace to all group. And that's just because of the story that we're, continuing to put out there we are the now testament absolutely 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 philip what you got yeah i was just uh, thinking about you you talked about about sozo meaning uh healing and wholeness completeness and um uh you know and you know, when, when, when you hear these discussions about and controversy about being once saved, always saved, it, it's kind of totally, it's like an oxymoron or irrelevant mm-hmm. because it, it, it's totally meaningless to me now. Yeah. You know, I've, I've never really, it never made sense to me, but now it's just becoming more real to me that uh, it's a pathetic argument. Well, you, you never want to yeah. play baseball with Baptists because 
they believe once safe, always safe, you know, I mean, so. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that, uh, playing baseball? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm speaking to a guy that, 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 that it, it's not your national game, okay? Yeah, it, it's like, it's like when, when you hit a ball and run to first base and, and, and uh, they throw the ball there and they determine whether you got there safely before the ball got there or, or not. So uh, are you safe on first or safe on second or whatever? And uh, uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, not an international bit of humor. I'm sorry, Philip, excuse me. <laughs> I kind of like who's on first <laughs> kind of thing. All right. Who else? Let's hear from somebody who hasn't said anything. Dana. Uh, oh, okay. I, I'm not on mute, so. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking with all of this about um, Friday, we had a, a group, I had a group of women over, and one of them is, uh, she comes from the Bob Jones background, which mm -hmm. is very legalistic, yep. very, very, uh, when they go through school, they have tons of rules and she said as growing up that um well when she was in bob jones that you couldn't have any spade um, well they would have the boys and the girls sitting in the same area but you had to have sunlight or some kind of sunlight between each one because you couldn't touch you know and they had all these rules like that that um you know were very very enforced and everything and what was interesting then, she was talking about her experience as a teacher, and she's excellent at um, making it come to life. She just has a gift of that. And, uh, but being educated, worry so much about everybody going to hell or not. And, uh, but what was so interesting that then she explained uh, how she's gone through being a teacher her first experience in a Christian school and how all the kids came from, they were rejected from public schools. So she really had a difficult time because these were kids that were having big problems. So, but, you know, dealing with the reality of that was very eye-opening eye for her. But what has dominated her whole experience has been love, you know, and yet because of her teaching in Bob Jones, you know, it's all worry about them all going to hell. But anyway, she ended up then teaching special ed in the public school, and now she's a substitute teacher, just explaining, uh, you know, her experience with that. And uh, the bottom line is that she can only see that we, uh, in the public schools, you can't mention God. And so what she says is that, but the bottom line we have to offer every child is just love. Now, see, th that's, that's the absolute truth. <laughs> and coming from her background, I thought it was really amazing how simple it is, you know, that we do have encouragement. And, and uh, like you said, we have an abundance of, of uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all mm -hmm. these things to give to people, even when we can't uh, say it's from God, you know? And uh, I just thought it was beautiful, the, the end of what she had to say and not even mentioning how. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> didn't even come into it so yeah. you know it's it's really beautiful how god's love is everywhere and yeah. it's it's even when we're we're taught wrong or we're you know it's still there and and we can't deny it so i don't know anyway and you know when you mentioned sozo that last quote you did um i think it was second Corinthians 8, 7. Yeah. And I was trying, I don't know where you, I mean, you mentioned a lot, but I don't know what word it was that was sozo, because you said 
Jesus infinitely rich and sozo abundantly blessed. Maybe that's what you said. Yeah. I was just trying to figure well, one word in there was sozo, I guess. It's, it's not one word. It's, it's sozo in that first sozo compass accompanies several words together, kind of a phrase. Okay. So it's like a, it's like the phrase of being going from poverty to richness and abundant, you know, abundance. So basically, sozo at that instance, sozo means abundantly blessed. Yeah. Now, it's funny you should mention Bob Jones because when I was still in high school, my I was a little hellraiser. Imagine that. <laughs> and my uh, my dad was a pastor, and him and my mom had decided that they would pay for my college if I would go to Bob Jones. And I went, actually, I had a scholarship offer to play football at Kansas State, which I really wanted to do. And but I went down on there. Well, they took me, <laughs> took me down there to visit the campus. And they went through all these rules you were talking about. And uh, I said, uh, we were leaving there. And I didn't say this to my parents, but in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. no this isn't going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, it's funny you should bring that up. So. They, they have enrollment problems, JL, because following those rules, they don't reproduce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you got. Well, I'm I'm just reminded, and I may have shared this story uh, before. I know I've told some of you, but um, unfortunately, I didn't <clears throat> I didn't realize this uh, until towards the the latter part of my teaching career. But JL, I had some of those little hell raisers when I was teaching too. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned that I needed to tell them that it wasn't them that I was upset with and, and that uh, their choices um, I had a concern with. But I would say this, and some of the little boys, they'd kind of go, Ooh, because I would say, I love you. What you have done does not affect my love for you, but I'm concerned about the choice that you just made. And uh, but I wanted to be sure that they knew that it didn't affect my love for them. And I wish I had known that at the beginning of my teaching career, I wish I had known that when I first started having children and all that kind of thing. But at least the Lord let me learn that uh, later on. <laughs> yeah, just by the way, who exactly is Bob Jones? Because it's uh, unfamiliar a, territory. Bob Jones was a. Um, for all intents and purposes, a Baptist preacher that was came came out of Chicago, I believe, and he started a ended up going down south, and he started a Bible school, in, uh I can't remember exactly what it was now. I remember going there, but I don't remember exactly what state it was. I was, I think it was in South Carolina. Yeah, it's Greenville, yeah. South. That's Carolina. what I thought it was Greenville. Yeah. yeah, and so, yeah, that was definitely a big. Big, big, big no for me. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, you know, Kitsy, I'm going to go back to what Kitsy said about having those Hellraisers in school. I wasn't a big Hellraiser in school. I was that way with my parents, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I, I had teachers that were, like you said, they just, they loved me. Just be, you know, be, just for who I was, you know. And I think my coaches loved me because I could, He's a freaking athlete, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, they just, and so like a lot of my high school teachers were very influential in my uh, choices, I should say, even though some of my choices were not uh, the best, but they didn't, uh, you know, God does, takes all that stuff and makes it, works it out for his good. And uh, so now here I, here we are. So, who else? Tell me stories. I like stories. Lenny, what do you got? Oh, let's see. There we go. I was just going to say, I was uh, kind of praying this week and uh, praying a little bit of Sozo, too. Uh, yeah. Like I said uh, last week before we recorded, 
that I like to take the the old Jewish prayer, blessed are you, O Lord God, who gives us bread from the earth. And I like to switch the words around to apply to people's lives or apply to my life. So I kind of altered it and said, uh, blessed are you, O God, who uh, is the king of miracles. Mm. And I was, I added to it and uh, let me see, I think I have it here. I'll read the whole thing. I said, I thank you, God, King of the universe for being king of miracles. I know you are good and that you do miracles that circumvent the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. Since you are so good and loving, I thank you for giving a miracle of great health and strength to my brother Anders in Vaxo, Sweden. Mm -hmm. I know that you, God, are good. And so I thank you now because I know you are giving him good things that work out for the best. And I started praying that two or three days ago, and I think it worked. <laughs> it always works. Amen. And, you know, we... Uh, Thank you uh, for that, Lanny. Yeah. Some, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes as, well, we were, we're taught this in some church settings, you know, it doesn't, not going to work if you don't lay your hands on it, you know. Well, that's far cry from the truth. And so... Uh, I don't know. It's different, different, different. So, I would I would say any miracle that depends on us isn't really a miracle. It's it's yeah. coming from the miracle working God. We, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I I think I said brought this up last week. Miracles and healing are two different things. Yes, and healing that was is, good. That healing was good. is when something goes awry in our body and. God returns it to uh, a former state. A miracle is when there's something missing. Like for instance, if if you know if, if, if a person is born deaf and there's parts of their ear that are missing, and God makes them hear, that's a miracle because He has rebuilt that inner workings of that ear, or bypassed it somehow and made it work regardless. So, you know, when you're, when he's doing something that's beyond normal, uh, I mean, beyond normal physical, then it's a miracle. And then he's doing this restoring the physical, then it's a, a healing. And so. comes out of that creative creation or creative realm. You know, it's funny yeah. you use that example. My oldest son was born with a hearing loss and it was from his premature, six weeks premature uh, what do you call it when they put them in the little prenatal container anyway oh, yeah. some fibers that transmit sound in the ear didn't develop right, right. and uh, I uh, I prayed that he would be healed along about I mean all all through his childhood and one time I uh, around when he was eight years old uh, it was a real stressful time in my life. I won't go in, in, uh, in my family's life. I won't go into the details of exactly why, but uh, I, I prayed and he evidenced what looked like a healing. Well, that over time reverted back to the norm, if you will, or what was existing from his child, childbirth. And, you know, it wasn't until really until I heard you make that distinction clear that I understood that what he needed was a creative miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, he needed something he didn't have, mm -hmm. not something that once was and needed restored mm -hmm. to its original, con you know, uh, or healed from. And so, yeah, that that really impacted me. I would like you to know from what you shared mm -hmm. last week. And, and I. I, I I love him. He's he's uh, obviously the oldest son I have, and and uh, my first, and and that you know that's the only thing I want for him is a is is the miracle of his hearing restored, but his heart's very tender to God, and I you know something, I don't even know if he remembers this from his childhood. He was eight, but I remember it really well because I I was. I was a little downcast because it didn't take, you know, it didn't, mm -hmm. didn't continue, but he, uh, he, you know, he has had a, a good life in spite of that. And, 
actually because of that. Right, and or because of that, yeah. yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Wonders what you got, brother. Yeah, I was thinking about um, um, oh, now I'm there again with names. <gasps> the Windyard Foundator. Um, mm. Bob, um, uh, I, I, I come back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah. There, it's a big difference between uh, praying for for a miracle and for healing. To me, it seems like it is anyway. I mean, it's the same process. You just go before God, and say, and uh, just cry out, and then listen to what He says. So, Bob, what do you got? If you look at the upper quadrant of my uh, picture here, I just laid my hands on you. Okay. I mean, there it is. We we can literally, we can literally lay hands on somebody online. Uh, we there's just no limit to us uh, being able to reach out and touch people, and that, that's really absolutely. what we're talking about. Yeah, that's one thing I love about this format is we. It doesn't matter where we are; we're still all together, and we're all one in Him. You know, we're just we're just a big family, and it's and our family's growing. It's strung out all over the world, and I love it. I just absolutely love it. So, one of these days, I'm going to come see y'all. Let me say this too: uh, everybody on these calls is doing what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, Kitsy, your kids knew you loved them before you knew to tell them. Uh, and I'm talking about your, your, your own children and your, and really, a, you know, I married a teacher. I understand that those kids in that classroom are your children too. And they, they knew you loved them when you chose to devote your life to raising them up, to educating them. And, 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 and Jeff, every time you walk in and into somebody's house and let there be light, they know you love them, but every, everybody on these calls is practicing exactly what we talk about every Sunday. Sometimes we're aware of it. Sometimes we see it. Sometimes we walk away and say, wow, man, what a deal. Other times we do it and don't even know. We, we don't have a clue that we did it. But it is, Jeff, that spirit. That same spirit, by the way, I would remind us all that raised Jesus from the dead, <laughs> that we were given before the foundations of the earth by name. Yeah. Okay. And, and I be who you are. Everybody else is taken be who you are. Everybody else needs you to be who that is. You don't have everything the world needs, but the world needs everything you have. Oh yeah. That's good. So just, just Flo preaches that to me when I, when I start saying, man, there's just so much I'm not getting done, you know, mm -hmm. just give it, leave it all in the field. Because I want to tell you that the great, the great combination of it, the great plan, by the way, that was not, was, was not a predestination that some are going to get it and some aren't the great plan that, that never needed to be modified ever from from the beginning because it was perfect in the first place has supplied everything everybody needs and we're all a part of it whether we realize whether we realize the gravity of it or not i'll guarantee you we're we are all a bigger part of it than we'll ever know on this side of eternity mm -hmm. but everybody here you're, you're all a success people amen in the eyes of god man wow he would say about every one of you, brother and sister, this is my beloved child and who I am well pleased. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anders, what do you got, brother? Remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember. John Wimber. When, yeah. when, he, when he became a Christian, uh, he, the first church, church he uh, 
he went to he was sitting there and after after the the meeting the he asked the preacher pastor when are we going to do the stuff uh, and the pastor said what, what do you mean when, when are we going to do this stuff healing healing people and doing this stuff and uh, the pastor said well, no, we, we don't do that anymore <laughs> so he so he but he 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 was uh, uh, convinced that uh, God wanted to do things, so he started trying. And uh, I think perhaps we need to try more. We not be so afraid <coughs> to because I I used to say to people I, I shall pray for you, but uh, I not nowadays I I don't. Uh, I don't ask them so often if I can lay my hands on them, but I, I think I'm there again. I should do that again. I, I have the spirit has spoken to me about this that I must do that again because things happen when you expect them to happen. If you are in an environment where where you expect prophecies and uh, words of knowledge and uh, all these things, healings. Uh, they happen because there is an expect expectation in the group of people that it shall happen, I think. And mm -hmm. then, and then they're, they're, of course, they will not happen all the time, but at least I have tried. I, I, I prayed for a priest once he had, I think he had MS or something like that. He, 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 couldn't, he, he couldn't use his legs the same way anymore and i prayed for him and i said to him oh perhaps uh, god will not heal you right now but later and he said anders you shall remember every time you pray for someone is an act of love and i think that's i i will, I will try that again i will go on that road again really mm -hmm. i need to do that uh, and I I'm, I'm talking to myself what I should try sure. to do, really. You know, uh, one of the things I, I look at, uh, I Jesus told us we could do the things he does, only greater things. But he also said he only does what the Father tells him to do. So <clears throat> when I go into a situation like you're talking about, Anders, I will say, Papa, is this what you want? What do you want me to do here? And I listen and wait for him to give me an answer. And if he says, for, you know, for me to do something, move forward and do something, then I will. But if he says to me, I got this, I have to let it go. Because if he's got this, he's got this. You know, and uh, so. And then you, you are just doing what Jesus did. Exactly. He only did what he saw his father do. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So I, uh, and I, I do, you know, I know that he walked into places and, uh, and the scripture tells us that he walked into, I can't remember the name of the town, but he walked into some little town and everyone was made whole. Sozo, everyone was made whole. I can't, like I say, I can't remember the name of the town, but I, I know it's in, I know it's in scripture. Bob, if if we really get can and it's too big to totally wrap our head around, but if we can really get a grip on the concept that we aren't part of God's plan, we are God's plan, mm -hmm. and 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 in that situation, what we do has an impact where it should have in the overall plan uh I, I don't know if i'm expressing myself correctly here or not but but sometimes not saying something or not doing something is as big a part of the plan is saying something or doing something because we're seeing our little piece I, i've talked a lot with companies that i consult with about entrepreneurialism an entrepreneur is a person who comes into a big entrepreneurial operation and clearly sees their part of it. And they take ownership of that part and they do that well. 
and that's their contribution to the much bigger plan. And every one of us is 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 an entrepreneur in God's great entrepreneurial plan of creation. And and uh, I, I just posted a link to a song that, by the way, I got I, I got around a fifty thousand dollar miracle twenty seven years ago next week. Uh, 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 37 years ago next week. Uh, but I mean, money appeared that I desperately needed that didn't exist. It was a miracle. Um, but, but we're, we can walk out in confidence and be who we are and do exactly what you're saying, JR, JL, not, not feel any pressure. Well, I've got to do something here. I've got to do something there, but say, Lord, um, I, I'm here to do my part in your big, in your plan. What do you want me to do here? And the answer may be, I got this exactly. He's shown you so many times he is able to accomplish what he says he'll do. He'll perform the greatest task if you'll just step up and ask, but there's just one thing he'll ask of you. Will you believe? And we, we need to believe. We need to believe that we are a part of a great, great plan. And all we have to do is do our part and not worry about the rest of it. Amen. I, I, I haven't told this group this story. This seems like a really good time to do this. Several years ago, I, when I was, I was first starting to realize some of this, some of this stuff about doing, you know, God's bidding and, and what God wanted me to do. A really good friend of ours had a granddaughter who was killed in an uh, in an accident, and uh, she asked me to do the funeral. And I specifically heard God say to me, and we went to the visitation, and I specifically heard God to say say to me, "Raise her up." And I didn't do it because I was afraid. And I will say that that, that has haunted me a little bit. But even through that, I'm sure it would have been a disappointment to God, probably. I, I preached her funeral. Well, whatever, you know. And there was, she was a... 18 year old girl and she was uh very wild and in fact is she was killed in an accident stealing gas <laughs> they stole some farmer's truck because they were getting caught and she rolled the truck and, and it, it threw her out and rolled over and so i i did not i did not do that at the visitation so but I, but when i went to the funeral god used Romans 8, 20, 8, 28, and made all things come together for good. Because even though I kind of refused, and I really didn't intentionally refuse, but I was, I was afraid. I was afraid to make a fool of myself if it didn't work. Uh, but I'm, I'm convinced that it would have worked because God had prompted me to do it. And, but anyway, at the funeral, I, after the funeral, I had probably 20 or 30 of her friends that we're talking wild, crazy teenage kids, you know, come up to me and say, wow, dude, I hope you're around when I die. I want you to do my funeral. Cause that was, that was awesome. And I'm like, well, and I, I walked up on stage, right. On, on the stage at the church. And I, uh, I had notes, stuff that I was going to preach on, you know, and everything. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, I got this. I got this. And so I basically walked up there and I said, well, this is all the stuff that I prepared to talk to you about. And I just threw the pages out on the floor. I said, but God has a different plan. And so I started, I started talking to him, you know, and I could see over the crowd, there was probably oh, 150 people there. Either some of them were there in respect for the grandmother, some were in respect for the mother, and but there was a whole bunch of kids that were her friends, and uh, I could see these young kids 
um, their eyes started leaking, you know, <laughs> and uh, it was just, it was really powerful. And it was a real turning point, I think, for some of those kids, because some of them actually uh, followed up with me and I got to tell them about the Jesus that lives in them. And it was, uh, so I guess, you know, God can even use our refusals and failures for his good and his glory. And I, so, so because of that, that doesn't haunt me as bad as it used to. So that, that would mean JL that all things work together for good. Exactly. That's what I, that's <laughs> well, I, I mean, there's the loop. You, <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 you're, you're on, you preach to yourself. Uh, you, don't ever let that bother you again. You were preaching yourself. Hear your word. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty impressive though. So, okay. We are, I'm going to be mindful of everybody's time. Uh, I noticed that Stan had to leave early, so he's already gone. I uh, love all you guys. And I, I'm, I'm not promising this, but I'm going to try and next week talk about, uh, uh, uh Easter, maybe. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so we'll try. We'll try and talk about the resurrection and what that means to us. And uh, I mean, God's been talking to me about that already. So I think that's probably going to be the way it's going to go. Uh, well, so we'll we'll egg you on, JL. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take a uh, take a hiatus from the healing thing for a little, for a week, maybe. So uh, so. Uh, let me see. Lenny, would you close us, go to the face of God and close us in prayer? Everybody just uh, envision holding God in, in, in facing him face to face. All right. Lord God, I just pray that you would just sozo all of us in this whole group. And may that sozo be so all-encompassing that it just overwhelms us and that your love just spills out to everyone around us. Just pray that we would just constantly just keep going back to you for more of that love and just keep seeing it to where it's an ever-expanding revelation. I just pray that you would just guide in every one of us as we go about doing our different things this week. And we just thank you for all the things that you do for us. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> I got my hand up there. I'm, I'm laying my hands on all of you, and I'm praising God for you, thanking God for you. I I love you all, and uh, we'll see you next week. Shalom. Love Shalom. you all. Shalom. Oh. Be blessed.